Hi and welcome to Coffee with My Sunshine. Today we are working on four DIY home decor ideas. These were really fun and super simple to do, so if you'd like to join me, then please keep watching. This one was probably my favorite one to work on. You're going to need a 4x4 four four post cut into squares. Now we didn't really measure, we just kind of eyeballed them to be about the same size. I cut four of them. Actually, my husband cut them. <laughs> Next, you are going to need a torch. This is where I want to put out a warning for anybody that is under age. Please do this with adult supervision and with all the safety gear and just keep safety in mind. Please, please, please. <laughs> but this was super fun and it gave it a really cool look. I liked the burnt wood look. You could also achieve this with... Um, probably some stain or like a dark paint and just go around the edges like we're doing with the torch. My husband tried it and then I tried it. This is my son. It does get really hot so be careful and please don't start a fire. <laughs> After we burnt the edges, I um, let them sit for a while and kind of uh, dusted them off because they had, you know, a little bit of a black char that came off. Um, then I took some Mod Podge and just gave them all uh, one or two good coats. And this is what they look like when they've had plenty of time to dry. They're a little bit shiny. You could use the matte Mod Podge as well. But here I'm going to do a Valentine's. Um, style decor piece. You could also do a winter one, which I will show you here shortly, or just, you know, whatever theme you want to go with. So you're going to need for this one, wooden hearts, some nails, and some stencils. I'm writing the word love or painting the word love. Um, like I said, customize this to your home and your style. I just attached my stencils with tape and then took some white paint and a sponge. This I find is easier when I'm um, doing stencils instead of a paintbrush because it doesn't seem to leak under um, the stencil as much as when you use a paintbrush. I'm doing the painted letters first and then I'm going to go back to the O which that's where I'm going to be using those wooden hearts. So I wanted to say thank you to everybody who left me a comment or sent me a message. I really, really appreciate it. It really means a lot. Just, I'm kind of nervous, so just to hear your sweet comments and feel the love that you sent me and the prayers, it just really warms my heart. I really appreciate you guys. So for anybody watching this, when this comes out, I may be in surgery. I'm not sure what time I'm going to get this video out, um, but I will give you guys an update on how I'm doing, how recovery is going um, as soon as I can, and also hope I'm hoping I can start back on a regular schedule in the next week or two with videos and stuff because I really really miss you guys so thank you guys so much and here I could not find my e I have no idea where it is so <laughs> I just took a b in the same um, font in the stencils and I'm going to try and make my own e by taping off the bubbly part of the b you'll have to let me know what you think <laughs> sometimes you just have to improvise right <laughs> So for the O, I'm just taking those wooden hearts and I'm pre-drilling holes after I kind of have the hearts in place where I want them. And then I'm going to use those gold nails that I showed you. They also have pretty copper ones or whatever color you want to go with. And then I'm just placing the hearts where I pre-drilled and then hammering in the nails. And I, I picked gold because I kind of wanted them to stand out. You could also paint the hearts and the nails to blend together if you wanted, but I like the look of the nails. So 
So let me know what you guys think of this. I know not everybody's into Valentine's, but I'm going to show you how to use the other side for more of a winter theme. And I wanted to incorporate a little bit of winter because this is what my backyard looks like right now. It is so, so cold. So I wanted to make these blocks just two-sided so that I could use them, you know, throughout the year at different times. And I wanted to write snow on the other side. You can use a cute little ornament like this for the snowflake. You could paint one on. Um, you can use those um, rub transfer adhesive things. I am going to make a snowflake out of um, clothespins. Pretty simple. I've done these kind of snowflakes on my channel before. But you take the clothespin apart and then you glue them, glue the pieces back to back. I'm using two different sizes of clothespins. And then I'm just using some hot glue to glue them onto my blocks. And for the bottom piece, I am uh, making that flush with the bottom because I didn't want the snowflake piece sticking out like it does on the top because then my little um, block wouldn't sit flat. I just glued them in with some hot glue. You could use um, wood glue or even like E6000 or whatever. But see, I wanted that flat right there. So let me know what you guys think if you like the reversible little sign or blacks. And let me know if you guys try this project and how you liked using the torch. Or like I said, you could use paint or stain. But I thought burning the wood like that was really cool. We had done that once um, before. We made some shelves from my son's bedroom that had a similar look. For my next DIY, this one was super simple. So I got these jars from Hobby Lobby today. Um, I'll put in a little clip. They were 50% off, which was awesome, and they were $3.99 to start with. Originally, I was going to go to um, the thrift store and try and find two matching um, either like vases or containers that I could redo, but I thought these were perfectly priced. and. Um, it's going to be easy for me to do what I wanted. I'm going to also be using this textured spray paint. It's called Stone in the color Sienna. And then for mine, I'm going to do these really pretty blue colors um, because I want to add some more splashes of color in, in my living room. Um, and so I just thought these would be really pretty and I can use them for winter slash Valentine's Day, whatever, however I want to decorate with them. I chose these blues because I got a rug for my dining room that had all these colors in there. I'll try and put in a picture if I remember. <laughs> Um, so I was just pulling colors from that because I am loving the color combination in the rug. And I'm going to have to mix these colors because they're the, the only ones I have to make kind of like a creamy color. I had one, or actually two, that I really liked, but I can't remember the color. So if any of you can remember the color I used to use in some of my videos that was like a, a creamy beige color, let me know. If not, I'll go back and check through the videos.
I'll show you my inspiration piece here in a second. I just thought this was so pretty. I've done the drip paint vases before. I'll link that above in this video. So I'm just using the sponge technique. You've seen me do it a bunch and a bunch of YouTubers do it as well. So looking at this picture, there's more, there's like grayish colors down here. And then there's like that navy blue color up here. And then maybe a little bit of like black or brown. So I'm going to try that. And I might go over um, where I did the like cream color and do uh, more of a, a bone color like that. Because mine's a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see when I'm done. <laughs> I'm kind of making a line there. But you can always go back over with the light colors and, um, you know, fix it up however you want. That's what's cool about these sponges. That's why I always use them because it's so easy to fix them if you, um, you know, screw it up. So I was trying something like after I was done with this, see how like the the spots are very like, um, like definite, I guess. <laughs> um, but I wet my sponge a little bit and then went back over it and it kind of gives it more like a um, watercolor look. It blends it out a little bit so they're not so like, here's some spongy spots. <laughs> um, but obviously you do what you want. But I just thought that was kind of a cool effect instead of it being so like um, harsh. Not harsh, but you know what I mean. Um, this is more blended. So I think I'm going to do that with both of mine. And I did just barely any water on there. You want to kind of like make sure that it's not dripping wet because then you're going to take all the paint off and you don't want to do that uh, before you know you seal it because <laughs> then you ruin all your work but yeah I just think it kind of gives it like a cool watercolor effect I just wanted to show you a few different ways that you could use these besides just for florals For DIY number four, you're going to need a flour sack towel or a couple of them. I got mine from Hobby Lobby. I didn't use this exact one just because it was giant once I opened it. You're also going to need some inkjet, inkjet transfer paper and an inkjet printer. So I just put the transfer paper into the printer and then jumped onto Canva. I've shown you um, Canva before for um, a different uh, like clip art type things or pictures. This is where I'm going to be creating the pictures that I want for my towels. I wanted more of like a um, food theme for the kitchen. So I'm going with olives. I was just kind of showing you here all the really pretty um, pictures that you can choose for free off of Canva. And they're so bright and colorful. I ended up using an olive branch and a pomegranate. So this is where I was um, going to use the towel that I got from Hobby Lobby, but it was so huge. So I just used some flower sack towels that I already had. So after you've printed your pictures onto the transfer paper, you want to cut it out. And then you're going to use your iron on the hottest setting. And on the transfer paper, depending on what you get, it will give you instructions on how long to hold the iron on and how long to let it cool. And then after it's cooled, you pull up the transfer paper. And then you're just left with your image on whatever fabric you use. You could use a t-shirt even or um, a pillowcase or whatever but I think it turned out so cool I did end up screwing up with the pomegranate I got too excited and forgot to cut it out and I'll show you how I fix that in a second because you really do want to cut as close to your um, your image as possible so when I pulled it up because I pretty much ironed on the whole sheet of transfer paper <laughs> um, you can see the edges and it's um, you know pretty stiff so I just ended up after pulling up the little pieces, took that backing that I pulled off, there was nothing on it, and then just used the iron to pull up any of the, um, the adhesive stuff that was still sticking up. 
and you'll see how much better it looks here in a second. But really, you do want to cut around the edges. <laughs> I was just too impatient and didn't even think about it. So this is what it looks like after I kind of fixed it. And I'm sure it gets um, less like firm feeling after you wash and dry them. Just read the instructions. But this is what they look like when I was all finished. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you so much for, again, like I said, all your well wishes. Thank you for stopping in and crafting with me today. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.